Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we're in the month of May. <laughs> See, the moment I just mentioned it, the anointing just, you know, it's going to be a great month. Now we're going to start looking at something and it's important you pay close attention. We're going to be doing um, a, a study in the book of First John. Now this is important because I hear, and I told you the Lord is talking about new beginning. So the Lord began to talk to me about John and you know there's just a lot. There's just a lot we don't know yet. But the more we keep walking with the Lord and fellowshipping with Him, He begins to open our understanding and then we begin to differentiate between right and wrong. There is no way you will walk with God and be static in your life. You will just be dynamic. <laughs> Praise God. People who knew you yesterday will come to them and like, ah, something has got happened in your life. You've changed. Yes, you will keep changing. You will keep, your life will keep being renewed because the Spirit of God is working in you. Let's just pray. Father, we bless you. As we go into the study, Lord, thank you for your anointing that is present to teach and to turn lives around. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now then, thank you, Holy Spirit. First John chapter number 1. I want us to go there and we are going to begin from verse 1. So we'll just be taking it as much as we can until the Lord tells us to go into something else. But this is very important. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. John speaking here, he says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. He says, the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. John is telling us here that there was eternal life. But guess what? He says, we have seen it. We have handled it. Think about it. We have seen it, we have handled it. He's speaking for himself, man. John is saying, we have seen it. We have handled it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. Now, by the time John was writing this letter, he was, there were several years, but you see, by this time, most of <clears throat> the apostles that walked with Jesus, they were, they were, they had started dying. Now, you know, John was the one that lived the longest amongst all the disciples of Jesus Christ. Not only did he live the longest, he was the only person they couldn't kill. Not that they didn't try. They tried everything to kill him, but they just couldn't. History has it that at some point, they had to drop him into a cauldron of boiling oil. Now that's after they have tried several things to kill him. When I mean several, not spiritual, throwing spiritual arrow. Physically, they've tried to arrest him and do all kinds of things, but he just wouldn't get injured. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. And, and, and so they, they got to that point and said, okay, you know what, we know what to do, let's fry him. And then they bundled him and threw him into that cauldron of oil. But he came out without a scratch. They got tired of him and they said, look, you, you're not a human being. You can't live among human beings. So they banished him to the island of Patmos. And that was where he received the, the revelation, the book of Revelation. That's where he received it. 
So you see a man who had walked with God and not just walking or talking, but the one who have experienced the life that Jesus brought. And that is the kind of man you want to listen to. You want to read everything about him. You want to listen to everything he has to say. As much as you can get. And when you do, you pray. You know, something I started doing many years ago. When I want to study a scripture like this, I'll say, Lord, I just want to fellowship with John today. So I ask that the spirit, the spirit that inspired him in his life, I ask that that spirit will teach me. Because whose spirit am I talking about? The Holy Spirit. So now when I pray like this, and then I begin to study scriptures, I'll tell you this truth. I begin to hear the words. Now, I begin to hear it beyond the reading. Now, that is where the word of God comes in. You read the Bible, but you don't read the Word of God. You hear the Word of God. If you read the Bible and you don't hear the Word of God, you gain nothing. Your life will end in confusion. I'm telling you the truth. That is the difference that many people don't understand. So you say, I'm going to read the Bible cover to cover. Nothing wrong with that. But if you are just going to read it, you will end up in confusion. So he says, people say, I just found out that, um, what did you find out? How did you find it out? Uh, this scripture, this scripture, you are not serious. You are not serious. You know, you hear people, even preachers talk like this, and, and you just see how unserious they are in the things of the Spirit. You don't just... Compare scriptures to scripture. That's academic exercise. You want to find truth? You know what the Bible says? We compare spiritual things with spiritual. It didn't say we compare scriptures to scriptures. So what's the difference? There's a big difference. You compare spiritual experience with another spiritual experience then you begin to make meaning out of it, being guided, being guided by the Holy Ghost. I told you this before. You will never know truth without the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not in your life, there is no way you can know truth. Reading the Bible cover to cover will never give you truth. Nah, it won't give you truth. Say, what does that? Listen, the, the scriptures, the Bible is a book of truth. But there is one who opens the book for you. Except he opens the book, you will end up in confusion. So sometimes when you, when you, when you listen to people who who'd feel they can read, say, but it's not English. It's English. Yes, it's English. But it's also coded. Now, I'm not saying that to say it's reserved for a few to understand that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is it takes the holy spirit to open the book and if you do not connect with the holy spirit there is no way you can open this book and it's only when he opens it that it begins to make sense to you if not every sense you get from reading the bible without the holy spirit will end up in confusion and that's why people have gotten confused. People have read the Bible so much and they, be, they, they, they start walking in unbelief. You hear people, there's, there's no scripture, I don't know. All those are just a fraud. You hear people talk like that. Where do you think they got it from? They were confused. Because God so made it that it is his spirit. That's why Jesus said, it is good for you. He actually said, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. Then he began to tell us what the Holy Spirit will do when he comes. He said, when he comes, he will teach you all things. When he comes, he will guide you into all, not some, all truth. So brothers and sisters, we are looking at the book of John. Without the Holy Spirit, it makes no sense. See, 
So I'm not just reading scriptures to you. I am teaching you the word of God. Now, if your heart is open to him, and that's why you pray that prayer also, Holy Spirit, guide my heart in your word and guide me into all truth. Praise God. So John was saying here that, look, there is eternal life. Now, is it not amazing? No other disciple, no other writer spoke about this eternal life like John did. From, from the book of the gospel of, of, of John to the epistles of John, he kept hammering this eternal life. Now, he says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. He wasn't talking about Jesus. You need to understand this. He wasn't talking about Jesus like Jesus was manifested on the earth and we saw him. No, he was talking about the life. This eternal life that Jesus spoke about, this eternal life that we are talking about, says it was, it has been made manifest, and we have seen it, we have experienced it. Come on now, who's talking? The man who was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil, and he came out on hurt. He is the one telling you that we have seen it. Glory to God. Ah, kabaya to krumbereke saprida haskiyama. He's the one speaking. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Look at verse 3. It says, That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. Did you see that now? He didn't say that you also have fellowship with Jesus. He said that you also we have fellowship with us. Not us. We are sharing these things that we have experienced with you because it is true. Now when you hear it from us and you believe you will come into that same fellowship with us. Isn't this the kind of fellowship you want to experience? Ah. Man, look, I pray as we go on in this study, your eyes will be opened. And truly, and that's the reason I'm sharing with, with, with you also, that you too will come into the same fellowship that I have come into. Now, look at what he says. He says, and truly, let me start from verse 3 again. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So John is saying, I'm not introducing you to anything other than the Father and Jesus Christ. And these things I, we write to you that your joy may be full. Verse 5, it says, This is the message which we heard from Him and declared to you. What's the message? That God is light and in him is no darkness at all thank you lord jesus think about it he said i want you to come into the same fellowship with us and then he now tells you that the truth is this our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ now he says, this is the message that we have heard from him. And that's exactly what we are declaring to you. So we have experienced it. Now we are declaring it to you. And what's the message? So the message is this. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. None at all. Then he says, if we say, verse 6 now, if we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness. We lie and do not practice the truth. Why? Because God is light. There is no way you will claim to be fellowshipping with light. Who is God? And then be walking, practicing, living physically in darkness. He said, when well, that is your experience, you are telling a lie. You are not in fellowship with God. You remember I told you you can be fellowshipping with angels and think you're fellowshipping with God. There is no way you will fellowship with God and still remain in darkness. 
We're going to continue tomorrow because our time is up already. Listen, God is expanding your frontiers. And that's why he wants to fill you with knowledge now. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.